While I was growing up, Mormonism was an officially racist religion. Black people were not permitted to become full members of the church. What the Mormons called their priesthood was a central part of being Mormon, and blacks were not allowed into the priesthood. The reason for the ban was black behavior in pre-existence. Mormons believe you actually begin your existence as a spirit child on a planet far from Earth, and then you get a body from an earthly mother and begin your earthly existence. There was a war in this pre-existent world. People who chose to fight on Jesus' side were then born on Earth in white bodies. People who fought against Jesus were condemned to never have bodies. People who took no side in the conflict were born in black bodies. Thus the priesthood restriction on people with black skin. Richard Ostling has a pretty good summary. Quote, Many Americans, both secular and religious, have harbored racial views that are abhorrent in the 21st century. But the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and its leaders have been unique in proclaiming racial discrimination to be the will of God and thoroughly incorporating that belief into all aspects of church life for well over a century." End quote. Needless to say, this belief came under a lot of criticism in America in the 1960s. Then in 1978, Spencer Kimball, the president of the church, claimed to receive a revelation from God lifting the ban on blacks in the priesthood. They could now become full members of the church. The week the ban was lifted, I went to a Mormon church to a worship service and, and encountered a missionary I knew and asked him how the change was possible. Had all of a sudden blacks no longer sat out the pre-existent war? He couldn't answer my question. He finally took me to the top missionary trainer in the area and asked him my question. He looked at me and he said, young man, if you will just pray and ask the Lord if these things be true, the Holy Spirit will reveal them to you. In other words, he didn't have an answer for me either. How did Mormonism, officially theologically racist for more than 100 years, arrive at the decision to abandon racism? Here enters a new book that has caused quite a stir. Second Class Saints, Black Mormons and the Struggle for Racial Equality by historian Matthew L. Harris. He analyzes the restrictions that the Mormon Church imposed upon members of black African ancestry and all the bureaucratic machinations that went on behind the scenes to change it. Jana Reese is a faithful Mormon and one that I read regularly. She interviewed Harris and she says one of the main themes of the book was how much the hierarchy of the church argued about the church's racial posture and what to do about it. I have linked her interview below and you can read it for yourself, but let me summarize his comments. For many years there was intense debate within the inner sanctum of church leadership over the priesthood ban on blacks. Some in the top council of the church were adamant in keeping it, but others battled mightily for many years to change it. Finally, the president of the church, Spencer Kimball, made the decision to change it. Harris says, quote, when Spencer Kimball was praying in the temple in 1977 and 1978, he wasn't asking God, do I need to lift the ban? Rather, he asked, God help me get my colleagues to see the wisdom in this. Kimball went to great lengths to convince the apostles, that is the leaders of the church, that lifting the ban was in the best interest of the church especially as leaders tried to spread the gospel around the world, much of which is black." End quote. And that was that. Kimball came forth, announced a new revelation, and the Mormons changed their historic view on race. As a Bible-believing Christian, I find this process curious, even ridiculous. We are told by Mormons that one of the chief advantages of their religion is having a living prophet one who claims authority to speak for God and bring forth new revelation. Apparently, the newer revelations can contradict the older revelations. So theology is not fixed by the character of God, but is ever-changing. 
The Mormons could very easily get a revelation legalizing gay marriage or any other action that now is considered a moral outrage. It is clear to me that the Mormon God does not exist. He was manufactured out of whole cloth by Joseph Smith and other Mormon leaders. He does not remotely resemble the God of the Bible and is different in a hundred ways. Please see my article on Mormon doctrine linked below. This is not to disparage the many fine Mormons who live exemplary lives and are a credit to their religion. You ask, how can their theology be so heterodox, yet individually they live morally upstanding lives? The answer to this question is easy. It shows the power of Christian culture. Jesus Christ is so powerful, he shapes the behavior of those who believe wrong things about him or nothing about him. Consider how many Americans have no religious faith whatsoever, yet live lives that we would call morally Christian. And that's the power of Christ to work even in the lives of those who deny him. The Mormons have been through this before. Originally, Mormonism was polygamous. Joseph Smith declared taking plural wives an obligation for moral men. Disobedience to this commandment merited damnation. Then in the 1880s, when the Mormons had settled in Utah and wanted to become a state, the law in Protestant America was monogamy. In fact, a military invasion had been threatened as long as the Mormons followed their laws on marriage. The Mormon God decided that they were finished with polygamy, and in 1890, Wilson Woodruff, then president and prophet of the church, got a revelation in which God said to abandon the practice. So in time they did and they became the 45th state in the Union. This won't be the last time the Mormons face this issue. As I stated above, the Mormons abolished it because Protestant America required it for statehood. So the motivation for the new revelation was the law of the land. It was a Christian law. But the abolition of polygamy is going away in modern America. With the advent of gay marriage, throuples, that is three people or more being legally married to each other, and other combinations. Will the Mormons feel pressure or the need to once again allow polygamy in this new environment? Will the Mormon God once again change his mind on marriage? We can rejoice that we worship the God of the Bible who never changes. May he bless you mightily this day.